Hello and a very warm welcome to Business Today's CEO Immersives. On this unique series, we bring you up close and personal conversations with leading CEOs from across the country. Today, Krishna Gopalan, Deputy Editor, Business Today, is in conversation with Niranjan Hiranandani, co-founder and managing director of the Hiranandani Group, to discuss how in India we are seeing positive signs of recovery in the real estate sector in the post-pandemic era. However, how long-lasting and sustainable these changes are going to be given the rising inflation and interest rates is yet to be seen. All this and a lot more. Take a look. Good afternoon, Mr. Hiranandani. Thank you very much for your time. Uh, given real estate is such an interesting space to be in, uh, there's perhaps no better way to start off than to understand what your view in the sector today is, sir. If you can just point out to us some indication of recovery that you're seeing right now. Uh, Krishna, it's a very imperative uh, situation which has really changed over the COVID years. If you look at the entire gamut of thought on real estate, Roti Kapra Makan. Makan has been an essential ingredient in everybody's life, especially in India, since there has not been adequate social security for a person who retires. Uh, a house becomes imperative for him or her to get during his or her lifetime. So that's one. Second, during COVID time, there was a definite uh, realization that this was even more material. Husband, wife, children, all required to communicate from home. So a reaction took place wherein we got a spurt of uh, people buying homes during the post-COVID situation, during COVID situation and even post-COVID situation. And that is a plus point as far as real estate is concerned. The second part is up till now in the last five, six years, real estate interest rates have been very low. So all in all, Real estate has seen some remarkable recoveries even during the COVID period. And that has been a positive trend which is taking place. So that's a positive story as far as real estate residential sector is concerned, for sure. Sir, I can't help but ask you what's happening in the US now, because in one sense, people are speaking of a repeat of what happened in 2008. What is your own view as one is the inflation and uh, perhaps uh, danger that the mortgage cycle in the U.S. might be somewhat interrupted. Your view on that and also the potential impact it might have in India, please. India recovered very fast from the Lehman story and the extent to which it got affected was really more about the companies investing into India and also the fact that the input in terms of uh, IT and other things were definitely affected and there was a slowdown consequent to the uh, U.S. inputs. But if you look at it the other way, the comeback which took place within two years of Lehman crisis was absolutely fantastic. Now, is that a situation which may again come back in the United States? Uh, I think uh, I'm not the expert on it, but my gut feel is yes, it will slow down because interest rates in America are moving up quite fast. And if that factor continues, the sensitivity to house buying to interest rates interest rates is huge in the United States. Uh, if you ask me the extent to which it will affect in India, my view is I don't think the Indian real estate people will be as affected because of the increase in interest rate for the simple reason that it just 12, 14 years ago, uh, interest rates in India by HDFC was 16%. Uh, and we got used to that also. Now it's uh, less than uh, 7%. Even today, it's less than 7%. So I don't think it will uh, affect Indian real estate uh, so much, especially because inflation itself is 5.5, 6.5. And if inflation is 5.5 and interest rates is 7%, then your real interest cost is only 1.5%. And if you look at the tax benefits which take place, I don't think this slight increase in interest costs is really going to affect uh, real estate to the extent to which it will happen in America. Can you please highlight the exact nature of the situation and what really needs to be done, sir? So the inflation in India is definitely a cause concern to everybody. On the other hand, uh, 
the uh, finance ministry has also reacted with the fiscal intervention. So they have brought down the cost of uh, fuel. They have got down, brought down the cost of so many other uh, issues uh, in terms of petroleum products and others. This has definitely reduced inflation rate. My belief is interest rate hike is not going to contain inflation because for the simple reason that uh, the cost of inputs which are there relating to petroleum products will not change because you increase interest rates. And it's not going to reduce demand for uh, goods because you increase inflation rate. But the, but the fiscal intervention done by the government of India will certainly help to reduce inflation quickly and fast. If whether the governor, governor increases the interest rates or not, which I do believe should not be increased, uh, because uh, that's only going to increase costs of uh, financing. Uh, my reading is personally that it's going to be much more beneficial for uh, fiscal in intervention which has taken place. Maybe a little more on that will help the inflation to be uh, controlled. Sir, uh, the re real estate sector is always in need of a relook at regulation or even perhaps fine tuning the existing set of regulations. It's a, it's a constant exercise. Uh, would you like to elaborate a little bit on that, please, to tell us what regulations in particular uh, the government might do well to look at? Well, uh, I think the the biggest regulation which came up uh, about a couple of years ago was RERA, uh, the Real Estate Regulatory Act, and it has done a huge good to the industry, brought about a great amount of credibility to the industry, uh, transparency by the developer to the industry and others. What additional needs to be done is probably an amendment of RERA, wherein the RERA authorities also will be able to uh, uh, control the government agencies which give approvals, whether they are environmental approvals, um, approvals for <coughs> commencement certificate, occupation certificate, because a large they are not answerable. We are answerable mm -hmm. as developers for the per completion of project. But sometimes even after full compliance, we are not able to get the final clearances from the government. And hence, uh, there should be a power with RERA authorities as a judicial intervention, not only to intervene between the complaints between the developer and the buyer, but also between the planning authorities who actually give approvals for the building permission, etc. The other part of the question is the multiple effect. How, much, how does that really play out in real estate, sir? Because good economics will tell us that an increase in investment leads to so much by way of increased income. Does that hold good for the real estate sector? Krishna, you hit the nail on the head. Uh, the second largest employer in the country is uh, construction real estate. And uh, every dollar of uh, rupee of investment produces a huge number of people in terms of employment generation. So it's one part of it. The multiplier effect of it is again equally large. But I emphasize first on employment and second on the GDP growth. So the multiplier effect in terms of it in affecting 270 industries is a huge effect in terms of it. And the employment, of course, is there because it's a very labor intensive industry. So skilling of labor and focusing on housing and the multiplier effect in terms of GDP and employment, Krishna, is most important. Help us in understanding some of the key trends that are emerging in the sector and what the implication of that particular trend or trends are? The cyclical effect of the sector has been for last four decades, or four and a half decades that have been working. Fortunately, if you look at the growth of the industry, every year there's been a 10 to 12 to 15 percent compounded annual growth for 40 years. And we have still not touched the tip of the iceberg in terms of producing adequate houses for all. So if you look at it positively, the opportunity of growth in the industry is huge and will continue to be there for the next decade or two. So the trend in the long run is upwards in terms of the need. However, the major difference will be that how many people are working in the affordable sector and how many are doing the middle level and the high, high cost sector. Builders and developers are reluctant to make affordable housing because the margins are smaller in that segment and they tend because over a period of time due to inflation and government input costs which keep on rising 
uh, they find it difficult to to actually really make and stick to affordable housing as a segment which actually in all over the world uh, those opportunities exist in bigger measure so the answer is that i do see that uh, the bottom of the triangle will see a bigger growth in the next few years as compared to the rest of the sectors however it's becoming increasingly difficult for a developer to work in the sector because of input costs just shooting up the roof and hence the margin getting destroyed so i think that's a challenge uh, which we see but overall the answer is uh, krishna that this opportunity in the real estate sector will continue to grow and it will grow beautifully and big so i i don't see any uh, i don't see any structural long term setback in this industry would i be right in therefore saying that this is challenging but by far perhaps the most interesting phase of the real estate sector that you have seen over many years sir all in all if you see there have been various uh, uh, stories and situations which we have to adapt with or deal with as we do it the uh, only positive story has been the fact that uh, both the government and the private sector have participated hand in hand in order to grow the sector and a huge amount of understanding by the government of the day also that's an important sector look all, all sorts of problems do exist in the industry but i think uh, in spite of that real estate is continuing to grow there's only so much one can ask you about work but we'd like to understand what your interests are when you're not sitting in the corner office uh, krishna i don't have any downtime at all in life one third of my time goes into the business of business one third of my time goes into various factors of association be naso cham president narit co president imc president i worked on policy matters for the central and state government worked on national housing policy worked on uh, the pmay scheme with the government of india and its implementation worked with maharera in terms of setting up conciliation committees worked with state government maharashtra government for the national education policy under the leadership of dr mashalka so that's the second one third of my time the third one third of my time i spend in uh, uh, looking after 14 colleges in bombay six schools two hospitals uh, two temples a skill development center uh, which is completely all this is a charity that so two thirds of my time go into not for business activity in that sense of the term there is no time for downtime in that sense of the term krishna but uh, this is my uptime but in different ways not necessarily in business absolute pleasure speaking to you sir thank you very much for your time my pleasure talking to you krishna if you like the video do like comment share and subscribe